All right. Welcome back to the Journey to an Eight-Figure E-Commerce Podcast. I'm Emmanuel Lair, your host and CEO of Alea Systems, and I'm joined with my co-host today, Grace Alea, CEO and founder of GraceAlea.com, who also happens to be my sister. And we are both joined by the magnificent, the opulent, the original, the mag- the fantastic and personable, <laughs> extremely personable, Corey and Nicole from Okoa Beauty. Welcome, guys, to the podcast. How are you? Hello. Hola. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Hola, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo están? Muy bien. Muy bien. <laughs> well, welcome. Well, welcome, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Let's get it started. Would you lo- would love to hear from you guys uh, what got you into business and how the business is going. And what you yeah. do, of course. <laughs> yes, and what the business what your is. Business, yes. what, the, what the business is. <laughs> Corey, uh, La start? Hermana Mayor, would you like to get started? <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I'm Corey. I am the older sister. And um, I'm one of the co-founders of Okoa. It's my sister, I, Nicole, and I. And um, so Okoa is high-end curly hair care for the self-loving curly woman. And we inspire our products um, by the Dominican Republic. And mm. we we technically started this whole idea of creating curly hair care because our own struggles with our own curly hair. Growing up with the mentality that our hair was pelo malo or translated mm. to bad hair. Mm-hmm. And growing up with that um, society pressure that you needed to, you would look more professional, you look more elegant mm-hmm. if you had straight hair. Um, so it wasn't until later on in our 20s that we decided to transition to our naturally curly hair. And when we mm-hmm. actually started to explore products and we got really curious that um, then that that's when the idea literally came up when we just decided mm-hmm. to say, let's do something about it. Let's create something better for curly hair. And and it was just all inspired by our own our own. Um, story and are finding be- mm-hmm. better curly hair products that were cleaner, that was also mm-hmm. inspired in a, in our island, and that brought mm-hmm. that sisterhood. The fact that we're sisters creating this together mm-hmm. and helping other sisters embrace who they're mm-hmm. born to be is the main, main mission behind Okoa. I love it. Yes. What year did you say you started? So, so we st- we, we launched started- it and um. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say we started in 2021, so we were actually okay. under a different brand, but okay. name, but we're, yeah, we've been in business for two years. Very cool. Nice. Okay, so Do- then, go ahead, Emmanuel. I was just going to ask, like, in two years, y'all have been on a rocket ship then, because mm-hmm. you're successful, right? at least I think so, and I'm. that's my big question. Do y'all feel like you're a success? I think we're getting there. That's a great question. <laughs> mm. That's a great question. Right? Yeah. Now we're going right into it. We're just opening yeah. it up, going deep. <laughs> yeah. That's a great question. Well, I would say that, you know, the fact that we changed names and we saw the two businesses technically mm-hmm. and really quickly and having like, you know, we started with one name in 2021 and nine months in business, we decided that we were going to change the name and we were going to, we were going to rebrand. And that took technically 15 months to, to do. And we launched with Okoa in this year, like technically March of 2023. Wow. So it was, it was, it was kind of running two businesses at the same time, but the first mm-hmm. business was definitely slower. And then we launched Okoa and we prepare ourselves. We had a better branding. We had a better messaging. We had a better packaging. And all of that in the last seven to eight months, it's, it's been like amazing. The growth has been mm. exponentially mm. and it has been, you know, totally successful. But it took a little bit to get there. People don't know the other side mm-hmm. of the story. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and like Emmanuel said, he sees the success, but it took mm-hmm. some steps to get to where we are right now. Yeah. And that's kind of what we want to talk about are the steps. So what, mm-hmm. what are, what's your background uh, before you came, decided to go into business for yourself? Um, I can start with you, Nicole, la hermana menor, I'm guessing. What is your, what's your background? What are you, what were you doing before you guys launched Okwa? Yeah. 
So yeah, I'm Nicole. I'm la hermana menor, so the little sister. <laughs> and I just wanted to add a little bit of more context of how we got started. And this is a great question because it kind of, you know, leads me into that. But back mm -hmm. in 2018 or no, 2017, we both went through like big personal transformations. Mm -hmm. So like I moved out of my house and in Latino host household, it's kind of like, you know, not very common to move out when you're mm -hmm. not getting married. So for me, I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm moving out. I'm going to follow, you know, the American kind of uh, lifestyle, which is not really mm. what Latinos do. Um, and Corey mm. had just gotten married. And, and so obviously mm. she had moved out as well. Um, so it was like very discovery, you know, I went in through this like wellness, just lifestyle change transformation, like, and started mm -hmm. with my hair, I started learning YouTube, you know, researching, mm -hmm. loving, you know, starting to embrace my curls, because one day I literally woke up and I was like, what happened to my curly hair? My hair is mm. fried. Like it's completely <laughs> fried from, mm. you know, straining my hair so much and then using the flat iron, which really mm -hmm. like damaged my hair. So mm -hmm. I started to research and I like finally found, uh, found out about the curly haircut. So that's when like it kind of got me started. I went to see a curly hair specialist. They told me all about like what products to use. And then I started researching about products and then looking in the back of the products, the labels, and started reading those labels and kind mm. of getting really curious about what exactly people are using in these curly hair products. Mm -hmm. um, and then I like told Corey about it. She started to kind of get into it. She got a curly haircut and then we were both doing it together. So every day it's mm -hmm. like, well, so what are you doing for your hair? What are you yeah. using? <laughs> like, what's going on? What did you learn mm -hmm. today? So it was a very like interesting year because we were both mm -hmm. learning and we got curious and then Corey went and like started to research and found out that you can become a natural hair formulator, which is what <laughs> she did. And so she started to formulate at That's home cool. and I would try the products and like on my hair. Mm -hmm. And the other reason why we got curious was because we found ourselves using like a ton of products to get like mm. really good results. And mm -hmm. like we didn't want to do that because it went from mm -hmm. like having to go to the hair salon for like eight hours mm -hmm to then doing it at home with like all this, like, you know, big routine and big things that you don't really have time for anymore. Yep. Yep. So we wanted to simplify that. And so mm -hmm. when we started to create, we were like, we really just want a good curl cream and a good mm -hmm. gel. And that's mm -hmm. what really started everything. And back mm -hmm. in 2018, then we started to look for a manufacturer where like these samples that Corey was creating were really, really good. So mm -hmm. we were like, you know what? I think we can actually share this with other people. Mm -hmm. And we really started to look into the idea of bringing these products to like market. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the rest is history. And I think we mm -hmm. focus so much on the formula and like mm -hmm. testing the product that we really just forgot or really didn't think about the branding or didn't really like mm -hmm. invest in it because we were just, you know, trying it out and just seeing where it went. And in reality, mm -hmm. we didn't really set out to start a curly hair brand. We never mm -hmm. would have ever thought about it. We've always mm -hmm. talked about starting a business together, but we never really knew that it was going to be hair care. So mm -hmm. your question of like where we started, like we both went to school for business and Corey mm -hmm. um, focused in finance and I focused okay. on marketing and management. So we kind of ended up kind of being the perfect match <laughs> yeah. to start a business. Literally. Um, yeah, and I've been in, you know, corporate world doing marketing. Corey had been mm -hmm. in the corporate world doing finance. Mm -hmm. So we kind of already had that so sense cool. of business. But, mm -hmm. you know, obviously starting into the beauty industry that has been mm -hmm. very, very different from what we actually, you know, have been um, kind of, you know, the experience that we've gotten. Like, yes, it's marketing, but it's mm -hmm. not really for, for beauty. But now, obviously, we've been into, you know, doing it for two years. So Mm -hmm. It feels like we kind of know what we're doing, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think we were, you know, climbing, getting there, mm -hmm. almost there. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's just we're gaining the momentum because we did focus on going back and kind of bringing more of like the big inspiration and the heritage mm -hmm. to Okoa, mm -hmm. which is where we are now. Yeah. yeah, no, that's great. And honestly, we always talk about the fact that you if you're doing it right, entrepreneurship and Mel says this a lot uh there's no roadmap and there's no one who's done it before no. you because it's you are you know even if there are other hair care brands there's no Okoa you know and so exactly. I think I think that's awesome so um yeah so yeah Corey what, so 
tell me a little bit about, let's talk about the family business dynamic. So <laughs> let's, mm-hmm. how, let's how is it? Because, it. yeah, right? That's, <laughs> we, That's what we the have people want to hear. Some yeah. war stories. <laughs> yeah. you know, there's, there's some highs and lows for sure. But I'd love to hear mm-hmm. from you. I'll start with Corey. Um, just to see what how you guys manage the sister dynamic and yeah. then also the business partner dynamic. Yeah, and that's hard. And I think that's something that mm-hmm. every day we're working towards, right? Like we're to- mm-hmm. working on getting better. Mm-hmm. Um, when we started, I want to say like when we started since day one, since the, the first day we said we were going to do a business, we felt overwhelmed because we were kind of like mm-hmm. stepping on each other's toes and we were like mm-hmm. all over the place because we were just trying to figure out like what we were doing, right? Right. So mm-hmm. as we got more into the business, we started to identify, okay, these are my strengths and these are my weakness. Mm-hmm. This is Nicole's mm-hmm. strengths and this is her weakness. That's and right. this is where we're going to focus, right? So I think mm-hmm. it's been a, a, a learning lesson. Like it's been, you know, just identifying what we want to work on, what makes us excited. And it's mm-hmm. funny because the other day, something that happened that was like related to marketing and social was not allowing Nicole to sleep. And then the other day, it was something about production that was not allowing me to sleep. And we're like, at least we're sleeping. We're not sleeping about different topics, right? Like, yeah, yeah. you don't sleep about something, and I gotta sleep about yeah. something else. Yeah. So, like, that was actually, um, we laughed about it. It was issues that yeah. we were dealing with, but we were just laughing mm-hmm. about it. And I think we're gotten better um, about the sister dynamic. That's something that's still, like, we're working towards because we're on the mm-hmm. way or we're, like, together driving to getting somewhere mm-hmm. and we're talking about business and yeah. then we we bring in a little bit of cheese man you know what cheese man is like you know yeah. talking about like stuff like sister <laughs> yeah, yeah. sister talk um like on the way but it's mm-hmm. it's it's fun i feel like in our in mm-hmm. a sense the nicole and i are so connected we're not twins everybody mm-hmm. thinks sometimes that we're twins uh-huh. but we're not and it's like mm-hmm. we're so in sync because we have gone through the same thing so we found mm-hmm. that one business that we're both passionate about, that we're so mm-hmm. in tune, that it's mm-hmm. easy for us to literally say, because we're doing anything that it takes to grow the business and to make it successful. Mm-hmm. So we understand mm-hmm. that, you know, we need to um, check on each other, but at the same time, allow that person to take ownership of whatever mm-hmm. task that we're doing. So I think um, I'm proud to say that we're gotten a lot better. There's always room to, for improvement, mm-hmm. but um, mm-hmm. it's good to work with someone that, you know, there's days where I feel bad, where Nicole cheers me up and there's days where she feels bad mm-hmm. when I can go and send her a message and say, Hey, like, let's, let's stay together. Let's do this together. And I cheer her up too. So um, yeah. I'm so happy. And I wouldn't be able to do a call by myself if it wasn't, you know, if it wasn't together, mm-hmm. we would never be a thing. So I think mm-hmm. this has to be a sisterhood no matter what. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love That's it. Right. What do you think, Nicole? How's that yeah, dynamic? Yeah, I would been? say the same. Yeah, I would say the same thing. Like we're definitely have gotten better. I think it was hard because we were both so like we're both so passionate about it that we felt mm-hmm. like we had to do it all. But in the end, mm-hmm. we're like we're just wasting energy focusing on all the same issues. Let's mm-hmm. let's you know focus on like your strength, like Corey was saying. Like mm-hmm. I focus on the marketing, you focus on the operations. And then we come Mm -hmm. together and talk about things. Mm -hmm. But I think the number one thing that I would say for anybody who is thinking about starting a business or even does business with their family is Mm -hmm. the main thing is that you have to trust that partner, Mm co-founder, whoever that person is, you have to trust that person. Like in Mm -hmm. any other relationship, you know, it's Mm -hmm. like business is like a marriage, (laughs) like whoever you're going into business with, like you really Mm -hmm. have to trust that person because otherwise it's just not going to work. Like Mm -hmm. you really have Mm -hmm. to be connected. You really have to kind of trust that the other person's going to do what they have to do. And then when Mm -hmm. you come back together, it works well because you're both Mm -hmm. passionate about the same, uh, you know, end goal, which is getting to the next level, next, you know, uh, milestone. So I think Mm -hmm. that's the main thing that I would say. You have to trust each other. And I don't know what you and Emmanuel, you know, have (laughs) to share, but you've been in business for longer than us. Mm -hmm. So I would say, I don't know mm-hmm. if that kind of resonates with you guys. It, it is. And I was yeah. about to say, like, okay, now we did the nice stuff. That's so wonderful. That's nice. Can we get real now? Can we get real now? <laughs> can, we look, can we talk? Because literally we had this debate, Grace, safe and space. I want to. Yeah, it's yeah. a safe space. Where's the safe space? We were having this debate because she was asking, uh, the question came up. 
would you do family and business again? And I was like, no, not just no, but no way. Never going to do it again. And Grace is like, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And we're literally on opposite side of the fences. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, like, and, and this is where we came to was, like, if we're going to do it, there were some caveats. I can't remember what they were now, but it was like, if you're going to do it, I think it's like what you said, Nicole. You have to really trust the person. And I even, even were saying you have to be willing to paper it up, like document and literally like mm -hmm. set mm -hmm. very clear boundaries. And one of the, the other founders we interviewed, Cito, she, she mentioned um, having boundaries, that boundaries equals love, actually, mm -hmm. which I found That's a right. fascinating thing, right? It That's helped so by, by establishing, no, you cannot do this, or no, you will not mm -hmm. do that. You're actually loving someone because you're setting, you're protecting yourself, now, which I thought was fascinating. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know yeah. we didn't do that as well as we could have. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, we so like to say that. Knows boundaries now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like, have you guys, what, what, what has the struggle been, you know, being, yeah. cause there's gotta the be some downsides. points of conflict. Yeah, yeah. Where's the friction? Where does it, where do you find the friction tends to happen? Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. I think it's something I mean, when, like we're both. Oh, no, I was just gonna say that when we're both kind of like trying to tackle the same issue and like again like mm -hmm. putting so much energy on the same stuff and then you end up saying like oh but i'm doing that and then there's a person's like mm -hmm. oh no of course like but i'm also doing that so it's kind of like mm -hmm. disappointing because you feel like the other person kind of like is not really trusting that you're gonna get it done mm -hmm. or it's not gonna work mm -hmm. you know so i think that's just that's been the main issue but i feel mm -hmm. like this year we really have you know worked on that because mm. we knew that we couldn't keep that you know up if we wanted to go to the next level especially because we i think i think it was mostly because we were running two brands at the same time yeah. we were doing yeah, the old name and nobody knew that we were rebranding we we had to go through the process and it's like and then we had this whole new brand go coming and then we also mm. have to focus on keeping the other brand afloat because obviously we already had customers we were still building the community, but also keeping mm -hmm. those people happy and then focusing on the next stage, which was the rebrand. So I think mm -hmm. because yeah. we had so much going on, um, we kind of felt like we were overwhelmed. And again, if you don't mm -hmm. set those boundaries, you really burn yourself out. And then it's like mm -hmm. you don't have the energy to really focus on the things that matter. So mm -hmm. I think this year, like we've had so many conversations about that. Like we're like, mm -hmm. oh, no, we really need to get better at setting boundaries and We've gotten mm -hmm. so much better in like working on having like, you know, a like a project management kind of platform like Asana or something like your mm -hmm. even your Google Calendar. Like we got Calendly this year. We were like, mm -hmm. okay, let's not waste more time trying to schedule things. Like we really mm -hmm. need to be more efficient. And I think mm -hmm. those little things that we kind of did and we just let like minor upgrades really helped mm -hmm. us to kind of set those boundaries and make ourselves like more efficient and, and work better together because you really mm -hmm. sometimes you just need the tools to do it like calendar totally. you need yeah. like asana boards you need these things mm -hmm. to keep you organized because otherwise you're just going to be all over the place and mm -hmm. core you can add yeah. whatever you you, yeah. you think i missed yeah i was gonna say like we're like the boring sisters we don't really fight like <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> we're like oh, that's so like good. we really don't fight and, and yeah. the, I think what the, when it gets real, like if you want to have like that real conversation is the days where I'm like, Nicole, I want to quit. And then she's like, no, we're not quitting. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so like, yeah. it's like that conversation yes. that we're having yeah. where instead of like yeah. fighting about something, um, I think, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, if we get real, like Nicole and I have a very different sibling relationship. So when, mm -hmm. you know, growing up, you know, our parents divorced. So we found a lot of comfort in each other. And we actually stayed together back home when um, our parents were trying to, you know, move out of the country and they were like doing their lives and my mom remarried and all that. So in that time, Nicole and I were together and we stayed with like family members where we, we actually like struggle because we were not like in one household with like one grandmother. Like we were like jumping from household from, to household mm -hmm. until our, our parents would get their life together. So that mm -hmm. bond that we created where yeah. like we were like each other's like companions. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. that trust that, yeah. you no know, like you, you can't just like, you know, come up with like, you know, totally. so I feel like that's the thing. Like I can live, literally l l give my life to Nicole and I know she's going to, you know, take care of it. So I feel yeah. like that type of relationship is really hard to break. Mm -hmm. So 
unfortunately, yeah. I have no drama. We don't really fight. I know. That's good. That's awesome. That's really no, good. that's awesome. Yeah, I and I love okay. thinking that. Oh, sorry, Grace. Go, go ahead, ahead. Mel. Yeah, I was no, going to say, I love the idea of, uh, I will concede that. There is something mm -hmm. so wonderful about your family being in it with you. Because when mm -hmm. you win and the yeah. business is taken off, you go home yeah. and they're right there ready to pat you on the back, celebrate, yeah. let's, oh, let's yeah. congrats. It's not like where if you're at work, you have to explain what happened because they don't understand. Yep. You know, because yeah, they right. don't work your job, you know, if you work yeah. a job, right? And they're just like, you have to do all this backstory to get to where it was good. And then they're like, okay, good. And, you know, now what's for dinner? Like, mm -hmm. what are we, where are we going tomorrow? What are we doing? Because they don't really relate. Yeah. But when you're in it with your family, when you guys win, you win together. And you that there together. is something that's yeah. even more magnificent about mm -hmm. that than, you know, just w doing it on your own, I think. So I, I'll, I'll yeah. give you that. You guys are right. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I'm curious to know if you guys have had to hire any full-time employees yet. Wow, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we're in the process of doing our first okay. hire. So Watch out. Okay. We're going through there that. Go. Yes. Snaps. Okay. Yes. Snaps. Okay. Congratulations. Congrats. So share any so, tips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely can. What are, yes. What's the first position you're hiring for? So we are hiring for a social media and community manager. Okay, smart. great. Golly, you guys Very are so smart. You guys yeah. are so on it. So normally that's <laughs> the first thing I recommend because, mm -hmm. uh, and we've been talking a lot about this in this series, the idea of audience and community building, right? There's a lot mm -hmm. of brands that I was talking to one recently. They were like, yeah, we're thinking of starting a, 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 a e-commerce business. I'm going to find a product and I'm just going to run ads to it. And it's like, oh, that's the hardest way. Because mm -hmm. if you succeed with that business, you will be paying Facebook and ads forever and mm -hmm. never really build an audience mm -hmm. or a brand or anything. So starting with that is great. And even into some customer service, because on the flip side, the toughest thing that gets exhausting is just dealing with negativity. And that can, mm -hmm. and as a founder, right. you've got so much, you've yeah. got to protect your energy, you know, and it's not that yeah. the negativity is bad. You want to help people. But if you're just wading through negativity all day, that can ruin your energy, which then slows down mm -hmm. the company. So having someone there that can be a buffer so that, that mm -hmm. at least that way they can say, OK, these I need to escalate. And when, and that yep. the fact that yeah. it's social media and I'd say customer service and um, what did you say? Social media and community what was the other one? community, community. manager. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you're focusing on building a community. That's the way to go. We literally were just talking about with uh, Bubba uh, in one of the previous episodes from Giver. That's how he built his whole brand. He didn't even want to run mm -hmm. ads till they were doing more than seven yep. figures. And they were doing seven. He was like, I refuse. I only want to have the only marketing I want is word of mouth. I want the product <laughs> to be so good that someone else mm -hmm. would tell another person to go buy. He was super strict with it. So that's similar. And so mm -hmm. they've built a really strong community. And that's what y'all are doing. And it's, it's going to work. Mm -hmm. So good job. Yeah. yeah. I mean, awesome. we, yeah. we are very excited about the process. Um, obviously it's a, it's a scary, you know, thing that we never done mm -hmm. before and we're taking our time. It's like, you know, like hire yeah. slow, fire fast kind of deal. And, yes. um, and we want to make sure that we talk to as many people as possible for us. Mm -hmm. We are community. We are sisterhood. Mm -hmm. The whole, the brand is surrounded about that hermandad, that sisterhood that we have created. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. value that more than anything. And, you know, Emmanuel knows how, how mm -hmm. our community is and how strong it is. So we wanted yeah. to continue to foster that and to continue to grow mm -hmm. that community even more. So for us, having that as our first um, hire is, is huge, but also we mm -hmm. give it so much value because it's important for our brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if there's one piece of advice I can give, and then I'll turn it over to you, Grace, uh, is the prepare for onboarding and then make delegation easy so they can win, right? So when they come in, yes. like already have their first 90 days mapped out, and maybe not even their first 90 days, but like what they're going to do initially. And I love the mm -hmm. idea of uh, like, I see what you guys are doing. This is a new position. So there's a risk of being like, I want someone who can come in and figure it out. Right. That is mm -hmm. such a, mm -hmm. it sounds good, but it is horrible. I'm sorry to say it mm -hmm. if anyone's doing yeah. it because then they That's come in, true. they have no idea what they're doing and they're like, yeah, am I right. winning? Am I not? So if you can define yeah. for them, like these are simple tasks, as long as you get this bare minimum done every day, we're good because then guess what they get to do? They get to come in and win and know that, Hey, mm -hmm. I, I knocked all these things off for today. And even yeah. if it's not everything you want, you can say, I want more than this, but at bare minimum, I want this. And that way, at mm -hmm. the very least, you're getting your money's worth out of them. 
and they're able to succeed. To me, that is the mm -hmm. simplest way to make sure that a hire can go well to, to really increase your chances of getting a good hire and getting them mm -hmm. getting them productive quickly. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Definitely. Definitely. You're welcome. So I want to be able to get to the founder round or two, because there's probably more, ah, more nuggets yeah, yeah. that Emmanuel can give. But um, I wanted to just ask one more question. So how did you grow your infrastructure? So if you if you guys are doing mostly, you guys are the two uh, full-time, right? Employees. Um, so, but well, you still have shipping, sort of. you have manufacturing. <laughs> what do you mean sort of, Nicole? <laughs> I still have my full-time job. So I'm sort oh, of got it. Hmm. completely full-time but i love it yes, Corey no i love it because we're very clear about how we're, we're the goal for this podcast journey to eight figures is anywhere along the journey and so lots mm -hmm. of the founders we talked to for the first two three four years of yeah. their business they still had their full-time job uh, i think bubba was one who said he was working two jobs i yeah. think at the time and he's still living in his um, garage above the garage 11 above years the in garage and their yeah, eight-figure business, big old business, that. and he's still yeah. driving the same 99 Bronco or whatever it is. No suburban, same, but yeah. Suburban, yeah. <laughs> the same car, yeah. the same place, yeah. and he's leaving frugally. Yeah. So that's smart, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love it. Um, yeah. But yeah, so how did you build your infrastructure? What do you, Are you using a third-party logistics company for shipping? How did you find your first manufacturer? I'm curious to know just how have you guys so far yeah. built uh, your the infrastructure behind Okoa? <laughs> who wants to go? Who wants to go? Who wants to go? Well, honestly, I'm going to let you take that question. <laughs> yeah, let's start with you, well, Corey. And then, honestly, I'll get to, and then I'll get to how did you find your customers for Nicole? Yes. Let's start okay. with Okay, okay there you go. That's, that. that's perfect. Um, yep. So, for, honestly, it's been Google University. So, we have Google uh -huh. a lot of it. Um, and on, and, and asking questions. So we are very persistent people. Like we like mm -hmm. to ask questions. We, we like to ask, um, people to help us. And I think that's something about us that, um, we're not afraid about asking. And I think that has mm -hmm. get, you know, it's gotten us to the place where we are now because of that. Um, again, like Nicole mentioned, we are not from the beauty industry. Usually someone that comes mm -hmm. in from the beauty industry, they have networks and they say, okay, go to this mm -hmm. manufacturer, go to that. Mm -hmm. That's not how it worked for us. So for us, it was the other mm -hmm. way around. I start. I did the formulations course, and thanks to that, mm -hmm. I I received some resources about ingredients where you can source ingredients, where you can mm -hmm. do that. So cool. Obviously, doing it at home was not the 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 main plan. We knew we wanted a manufacturer mm -hmm. because we wanted the product to last more than four to six months, which is what mm -hmm. I was making. So we wanted a manufacturer. We wanted a lab. So what we did mm -hmm. is we started to like search around. Uh, we landed up upon a, a catalogs directory and started calling people, calling, like literally picking up the phone and mm -hmm. emailing people. And um, mm -hmm. I'll make the story very quick. But we actually like the whole idea started in the, towards the end of 2018. We worked with a mm -hmm. lab that was really close to us for a whole year. And there was mm -hmm. an incident in, in this lab that literally caught on fire and the production oh didn't goodness. happen. Wow. So mm -hmm. the person that we were we were working with for that whole entire year ended up leaving the lab, and we started to, to from scratch. We started from from wow. day one again. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. that was insane. But you know, yeah. we were like yeah. persistent, right? Like we are making this happen. And mm -hmm. um, I remember through that finding a directory and looking for places. I called everywhere. I call places in Texas. Mm -hmm. I call places in California. I literally called everywhere. And until we landed this one lab that we really wanted to work with. And what I did is I went to good old LinkedIn. I found the mm -hmm. vice president of this lab. I sent there her a message because we had a, a connection. And I said, mm -hmm. I know this person that is your friend and I'm doing this and I'm in Reading and Blah, 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 blah. And from there, she read my message and she gave me the right contact. And that's how wow. I was able to land this manufacturer because every email I sent was ignored. So um, wow, that's, 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 how we're right that's a hustling. That's hustling. Yeah. Did you say Redding, that's California? California? Like up north? Did you Redding? say Redding? No. So they're, like they're, from, they're oh, here in PA. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Monopoly. Redding, PA. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From the Pon wow. Monopoly game. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. That's persistent. Yeah. So, okay, that's, so thing, that's how you found your manufacturer. That's how we found a manufacturer. We still do fulfillment in house. So okay. um, I we do it here in my warehouse, mm -hmm. which is AKA the basement. So um, uh -huh. we keep everything in house and yeah. we, we fulfill out of here. 
Um, mm-hmm. We have our families help us. We mm-hmm. thankfully have figured out ways to save costs that way. Um, mm-hmm. And and technically, you know, everything through our e-commerce platform and we have a few salons that carry us. So everything has That's been awesome. like learning as we go. And again, being that mm-hmm. persistent person, um, thankfully, our where we manufacture our products now, the quality, it's amazing versus the first mm-hmm. lab that we used to work with. Mm-hmm. So again, it's just to tell you that even though we had that block and that issue happened, that wasn't. Mm-hmm you know, God had better plans for us, right? We just didn't see it at first, but because of that persistence, that was what led us to finding the next manufacturer and and doing Mm -hmm. what we're doing now. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And so then, Nicole, how then did you get your first customers and then start growing the brand? And then I also love the branding on the website, by the way. It's really elevated. I think that your packaging, all of it looks really good. So how did you, you know, are you also a designer as well? I am not. So through, you know, learning. And so we were mm-hmm. nine months into the old name, our old mm-hmm. brand. And then we what, what, what you want to name it? Do you know what, what was the name, the old name? So the old name was DN Organics. So that okay. I came up with myself, which is not okay. that great. But mm-hmm. so DN. <laughs> <That was great. laughs> so I think it's not, great too. Yeah, so you're so hard on yourself, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> it, was like, it was actually pretty hard. But it was uh-huh. a combination of our names. So it was, so mm. Corey's middle name is Dahlia and my name mm-hmm. is obviously Nicole. Mm-hmm. So it's Dahlia Nicole Organics. Oh, and it was yeah. always like shorter just to say DN and it was mm-hmm. more catchy. So whatever, DN Organics. So mm-hmm. that's what we launched with. And I think one thing that Corey forgot to say was that through that learning experience, everything was obviously a blessing in disguise because we started with this manufacturer, ended up working with somebody better. Mm -hmm. Um, but we, the initial plans that we had back in 2018, when we had that first manufacturer was to actually launch five products and we actually created Mm -hmm. samples for five products. It was a collection Mm -hmm. of five products we were going to start with. And when we switched manufacturers and looked at everything that we were doing and the bigger investment that we had to make for a collection of five products, we were like, oh no, 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 let's take a step back, start Mm -hmm. with one. Mm. And then let's go from there and start testing mm-hmm. and seeing. And in reality, mm-hmm. it was like the best thing that we could we could have ever done. Wow. Like that's cool. We yeah. just thinking back on it, we were like mm-hmm. launching with five products would have never made sense. Mm. And we were so glad that we looked back at everything that we were doing and decided to launch with our curl cream, which is mm-hmm. what we felt like was the biggest white space in the market that we can mm-hmm. make it so much better. Mm-hmm. So so we Okay, so 2018, we started over in 2019. Then obviously mm-hmm. the pandemic happens, which is when we yep. were supposed to launch in 2020. Oh, man. Okay. So that didn't happen. And then we mm-hmm. obviously ended up launching in 2021. Then we mm-hmm. were nine months into the business doing good mm-hmm. with two products. So we launched a curl mm-hmm. cream in March of 2021. And then in, Mar- in June of 2021, we launched our gel, which was our mm-hmm. second product. So we started with styling. And then nine months into it, in at the mm-hmm. end of the year of 2021, we're like, oh, we're going to rebrand. So we started mm-hmm. over. <laughs> Got it. Because, you know, the community was telling us that everybody loved the branding. Oh, we're not the branding, the products. But we were like, mm-hmm. the branding isn't great. So mm-hmm. let's take a step back mm-hmm. and really showcase what we're about. Because, yes, we're about sisterhood. We're about our showing our heritage. But in the old branding, none of that was coming across. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, mm-hmm. those nine months that we were testing the market, we, you know, with not a lot of experience was such a like learning opportunity for us because we mm. learned so much. We acquired some customers mm-hmm. and obviously our, you know, main supporters who have ever always been the local people that kind of know us mm-hmm. and then spreading the word because obviously we all know word of mouth is the best, right? Is, is mm-hmm. king. So mm-hmm. for us, acquiring customers was actually another smart thing that we did at the beginning, which was mm-hmm. invest in samples which mm-hmm. we did at the beginning and I have our yeah. samples here. Yes. Um, so when we launched with our old brand, we launched with free samples. Yeah. And mm-hmm. because of the mm-hmm. pandemic, it was great because we weren't out there, you know, in, in mm-hmm. events. People had to come to our website, but they can come and get free samples online. Yeah. So that's a smart thing that we did. And we continue to do because as curly women, we felt like it was always like hard to try new things. So we mm-hmm. wanted to make it easy for our community to try things. And yeah. that was the smartest thing. And how we acquire our customers is basically, you know, sharing our, our products through those free samples. Yeah. Um, obviously, we do, you know, our curly hair salons are another 
distribution channel for us. So mm -hmm. um, just having those the support of, you know, very professional hair, curly hairstylists mm -hmm. who love our brand and also kind mm -hmm. of, you know, are the ambassadors for us to keep, you know, showing the brand in their salons and, and introducing it to new clients. So that's another mm -hmm. distribution channel. Um, and then just, you know, in-person activations, which we've done mm -hmm. and influencer marketing, which obviously everybody does. Um, yeah. But we kind of just been focused on really showcasing our community and, you know, getting the UGC content because that's what people mm. love. Totally. I love it. So yeah. great. You guys have built such an amazing brand so far. Um, Thank you. I don't, do you want to jump into the founder rounder, yeah. man? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, so what we love, we're trying to coin this term, yep. founder rounder. <laughs> Right. But basically a round table where there's four rounders on this this call. Right. And uh, the folks listening could benefit from that. They're a founder, like having a founder group. And we just want to model for them, like what it's like to get support from other founders, because nobody in our lives really understands what we do if they're not also a founder. Mm -hmm. So we were just yeah, thinking right. maybe you can throw out a question if you have something you're struggling with or even if you're curious about. And we can throw that out yeah. to you as the same thing. And we can just brainstorm ideas together. For solutions. Yeah. Yeah. Is anything pop any challenges you guys are facing or yeah, did anything come up? Let's see. Well, there's, there's always something. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> I wanted to, I, I mean, you know, technically like one question that I think I get a lot and that I feel like now in this economy and that I hear from other founders is, Obviously, the brand awareness, it's it's hard now, right? Is is you know, you have to pay for, for ads more. You have to, you know, overall people are more uh concerned about how their their spending is. So what are challenges that, you know, how are you facing those things where like the economy is not in your side and people are being more um aware of what they're spending? But then you want to continue to grow that brand awareness. Like, what are those, um, what are those avenues that you're using now to make sure that you know you continue to to hit your goals? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which can you be specific? Which types of goals? Yeah. So, like, technically, you know, overall, like, how can you continue to to get your your name out there? Like, how can you continue uh. to have, you know, people see you without spending thousands in marketing because i feel like right now mm -hmm. as a small brand brand awareness costs a lot more than what it did back in 2017 mm -hmm. on 2018 mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. um i think social media you know the algorithm you know people always talk about it like how other brands depending on their timing it, it was easier to reach customers mm -hmm. organically but now we we're faced with the fact that, you know, awareness is way more expensive. It costs more to acquire mm -hmm. a customer. And then facing this economic issues, you were like, the economy, it's not the greatest. People are losing jobs. And then it's, people are restricting from buying. So what are ways to continue to grow that awareness without killing your marketing budget? Yeah, I think I love the question because it's slightly different mm -hmm. than what I normally hear. Normally, it's like I need to make sales, right? And so that's mm -hmm. been tough. Mm -hmm. But awareness, getting awareness, actually, yeah. surprisingly, that's getting easier than before. Here's what I mean by that mm -hmm. is, and they're one and the same, getting more sales with marketing, getting more awareness. Content is key, right? It's always been mm -hmm. key. But I feel mm -hmm. like nowadays, it's even more important, especially in this TikTok generation with attention spans coming down. But if you can tell mm -hmm. good stories and be mm -hmm. get attention from folks with your content that matters more than anything and you don't have to do a lot of it and this is where i think we got we lost our way a little bit uh in the last five ten years is social media organically is all about quantity jab 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 right hook mm -hmm. i feel built a whole generation of people who just pour out millions of pieces of content over 10 years right and mm -hmm. it's just like why you drown down the noise <laughs> But having good quality content or interesting content or awareness content that you then amplify, I think, actually does a little mm -hmm. bit better now. And so you can mm -hmm. combine the idea of like running ads, but only run ads, even just boosting organic posts that resonated and got attention. You combine those two ideas where don't just depend on organic anymore. Use organic for creative testing of an idea or a concept and then boosting mm -hmm. that with paid amplification, paid spend. Then you focus, then you're really getting attention and building awareness really cheaply by running non-conversion campaigns, right? Where you're running just like mm -hmm. awareness campaigns. 
because that's super mm-hmm. cheap inventory. Yeah. Every e-commerce brand out there is running conversion only objective campaigns. But if you're looking for not necessarily conversions, but awareness and building brand awareness, that is such cheap inventory. And you can run them on mm-hmm. TikTok, on Pinterest, on Snapchat, and just literally get your brand, make your brand seem like it's everywhere because it's mm-hmm. so cheap. The mm-hmm. second piece about the economy and dealing with um, um, inflation and all that people are still spending is a thing to remember there is what I like to think about, right? It's like, it's not that people are not spending and that people are not making money. It's that they're just being very picky now about where they spend Mm -hmm. before. It'd be like, sure. Yeah. I'll I'll buy it from a call. Why not? I'll buy it from Mm -hmm. grace. Let's let's buy everything. Now it's just like, Hmm, I'm going to pick one. I'm picking one. Yeah. <laughs> like, where am I going to buy? Or if they've never heard, or if they've never heard yeah. yet, or if this is the first time they're hearing about, it, they might be like, I less likely to test it, you know, like they would have right. in 2020. That's the only issue, right? Uh, sorry, Mel, continue. Mm-hmm. To no, the, that's the absolute <laughs> truth, uh, and it's just a mindset issue. Is now we just need to the the. It's not that they're not buying. It's just we need to provide more value. Right. And so right. really the key is just figuring out what is it about your brand that a, makes you differentiate and stand out? And mm-hmm. what is it that makes the value seem irresistible and then making it yeah. obvious? Because part of the problem, too, is even when I look at a picture of your product on a website, if somebody just introduced me to it, it's a picture of a product. I don't really understand. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like, is that going to be great? Am I going to? So mm-hmm. having content, having a way to demonstrate immediately yeah. how valuable, like, I mean, y'all's curls are popping. Right yeah. on fleek, yo. Is that still a thing? Are people saying that? Like, no, y'all no, slay. It's not. it's not a thing. Okay. No, 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 that's not a thing. Okay. My gray hairs are popping out. Like it's becoming. I'm showing my age, <laughs> but they look good, right? Yeah, and so really just, good. yeah, showing that, like having that aspirational yeah. idea, even just compared to the bottom in, in before yes. and afters, right? Like it used to be this, now it's mm-hmm. that. Like I get that right away. If I'm someone who has curls that are not on fleek i did it again and i'm not sorry about it i did it twice why don't you just use groovy and slam it (laughs) don't be a hater don't hate congratulate (laughs) but if i can see myself and i'm just like man i wish my curls look like that immediately now i've built that trust and it's so that's what i'm saying then of course like i said a second ago boost that uh, have the value and that's how you can get around all those issues can i ask you guys for your advice y'all are community building community and hiring community people i'm trying to build community around lay systems and uh Mm -hmm. build that up and y'all got the hermandad any advice on building a community around like because mine's not e-commerce it's more like agency but I feel like there's still like agency owners and founders and we could build a community mm-hmm. around. Any advice on how I could build that community? I think it's, I think what you're doing obviously, but maybe just like you said, just amplifying it a little bit more. Cause I don't know that people like maybe find you easily on like, you know, social mm. media. So I think it's yeah. just showing more of what you do on social. Maybe it's just those short snippets of even your podcast or or talking to founders, like going live even. I feel like that's really helpful for like those type of agency kind of uh, communications going live on like social media because you get to build community. Like we've done that a lot the last Mm -hmm. two years is going live and really talking to those people and just sharing, you know, our insights live, you know, monthly or quarterly or however often is needed because I feel Mm -hmm. like people really just need to know who they're working with and people love to see us like going live. Like they always bring their questions. They're always kind of interested to see what the next thing is. So I think mm-hmm. even just sharing more of that to build community would be great for you because obviously mm. you want to you want those founders to know you and find you and kind of connect That's with good. you. And I think that would be a great way to do that is kind of like showing up and, you know, being live and providing Maybe you do a Q and A during a live or something like that, where people can ask you questions. So, I think that would be a great thing to test, which I think would be great for like, yeah, yeah. I I want Bye, I wanted to add like when we think about community building and when we think about even social, like we want to be very intentional about what we post. And like, we always think mm-hmm. about three things. Like do, first, we want to educate. Second, we want to inspire. And, and then third, we want to entertain, right? So like, 
Mm-hmm. Those are the three things where like people want to follow you because they know that yes, we'll, they'll find tips to how to like stand their styling, how to wash their hair, how to take care of the scalp. Mm-hmm. But um, they also want to feel inspired by our story. So we're not afraid about sharing stuff. Like we share everything. If we're working on a new product, we do sneak peeks. Um, if we're like out, out and about, like going to events or if we're just like talking to other founders, like we always share that behind the scenes and people love that. Mm-hmm. And then the last one is like, we want to also entertain because they're there mm-hmm. um, to find, you know, things that make them happy or make them smile, make them laugh. So keeping it also in a funny way, like the other day we did a, a dance like we were getting ready mm. for this like gala and we did a wow. dance and that reel like literally blew up. It had like <laughs> 10,000 views or something like that, like within a few mm. hours. And it was literally so just Nicole wow. and I being silly. So like mm-hmm. it was the, com- it's always the combination. So when we think about that and also we never thought about social this way, but like we really want to make sure that we plan our social in a way that people are like, I want to continue to follow them because I'm getting a benefit from following them, right? Like I'm gaining something. So it's like how, because right now, like people want to follow you if they really are gaining, gaining something. They just don't want to follow just to follow. Um, So Mm -hmm. I think it's always following those three things. Those three pillars Mm -hmm. for us are very key and and people find community that way. Like if they're, if you're meeting their goals that way, they're going to continue to be in your community. That's Thank good. you so much. And I jumped the gun, That's too. Awesome. I appreciate that. And Grace, what were your thoughts on the question they had? Thank you for answering oh, yeah. mine, by uh, the way. I appreciate the help. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. it's good. Good good stuff all around. Um, mm-hmm. I think I, you said most of it, but I would probably just add that you guys are already really good at pushing out the content that Re- results in an emotional response and i think that that's mm. what gets consumers to purchase anyways right mm. um when they have an emotional attachment i think my brother touched on it perfectly with the idea of creating a i absolutely need this this isn't this isn't just like a uh, let me try this it's like no 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 my curls look like the one on the left and i want them to look like the one on the right Mm-hmm. Right. I need to get that's then the way to get that is with this product i think that you guys with more content like that i think you guys will will begin like Emmanuel said, and then leveraging it with with different um, actual advertising and putting money behind the content that you created, I think you'll you'll definitely be getting customers hand over fist. <laughs> awesome! Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah. you guys have supported us. We appreciate you. Our audience is so grateful hearing your story. Thank you for sharing. How can we support you and our audience support you? Put some more coins in your pocket, get you some more customers. <laughs> Where can we go to support you? Yeah, you can find us at okoabeauty.com. Okoa is O-C-O-A, beauty.com. And Okoa Beauty on all social platforms, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, um tiktok um we're trying to get better at tiktok too <laughs> but please follow us and and take our curl quiz so you can try oh. um our samples and, and get um you know and find better ways to style your curls so awesome. yeah well I love thank it. you so much ladies thank you thank guys you and that's right y'all go run run don't <laughs> walk to get the okoa beauty products if you especially if you want your curls to be on fleek be popping. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to strike that. We're going to strike that from the record, please. <laughs> this would not be removed from the edit. That is my favorite part. Oh, um, please. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank we you appreciate so much. It. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.